G'day Reefers, I'm Cam the Fish Guy and welcome to Gallery Aquatica TV. Today we have an episode of Epic Tanks and Why They Work. This tank is one of the best tanks that we've ever installed. It's absolutely incredible with its livestock. Uh, the corals and fish are really nice. It, it is still under development but everything is going really well. But the main reason why this tank is epic is because of the equipment. So we're going to run you through the lighting, the filtration, uh, the control system for this tank. But first of all, let's have a look at the fishing corals and then we'll look more closely at the equipment and why this tank works. Here it is. So usually when we look at these sort of epic tanks, we look at the corals and the fish towards the end, but today we're going to look at the equipment at the end because that's really what's special about this tank. But there are a lot of beautiful corals and fish, so let's have a look. We have some incredible trackies. There's two massive trackies. Uh, this one actually comes out about double the size it is at the moment. The lights have only just come on and so uh, nothing's out fully just yet. This second trackie is also incredible. The number of colors in, in this trackie is just sensational. And again, you can see the polyp extension is really good. We've got a few acros which are doing quite well. There's uh, the Duncan corals and some really nice hammers. With the fish, we've got a variety of tangs. There's a powder blue, a blue tang, a lipstick tang. There's some wrasse, uh, fire goby nice pair of uh, black eyes clowns. Everything's doing really well, but being a young tank, it's not entirely full with corals, um, but give it another year or two and it'll be just corals everywhere. So with the equipment, we'll start by looking at the lights. So with this tank, to open up the hood, we've got a remote control. As you can see, there's four Gen 4 Radeon Pros. They're mounted really neatly with a single rail on which each of the lights sits and it's suspended just with a single hanging kit, so it's a very neat unit. Also with this tank, we've got some slotted ducting towards the back. It's difficult to see, but it really effectively hides all of the cords. So all you can really see are the, the lights. But we'll close this up. And now we'll have a look underneath the tank because the sump and the filtration is something else. So the overflow system for this tank is a CALFO, which is an external overflow, which you can see down this little cupboard here. And the plumbing from the CALFO goes down into the sump, which is in here, draining into the tank at these points. So we have three drainage points feeding into what is possibly the most beautiful sump ever. It's a Hamali full acrylic sump. And so the water goes through filter socks into the protein skimmer section and we've got a large Deltec skimmer on this tank. Now, we've had to raise the Deltec up and so that it's skimming at the perfect level and there's an acrylic skimmer mount under which we have a marine pure block. From the skimmer section, water flows into the refugium. So we have a massive amount of ketomorpho growing really well uh, we've got a, a Kessel, um, uh, I think it's a H360. Uh, it's really putting out a great light, a great spectrum for the, the keto. It's not on at the moment because it runs an alternating uh, photo period to the light of, of the tank. But there's a massive amount of keto and it's really absorbing the waste well. From the refugium, water goes into the return pump section and there's a Vectra L1, an Ecotech which feeds water back up into the tank. So 
So let's have a look in the next section of the cupboard. So we've got our dosing vessels here, which are color coded. And in a minute, we'll show you exactly where they go to and where the water is uh, dosed, for, uh, the supplements are dosed from. But before we do, let's have a look at some of the other componentry. Uh, we've got a UV twist 57 watt. An inbuilt uh, RO system. So it's automatically feeding RO water into the back of the sump. There's an auto top up reservoir uh, in the back of that Havali sump. And we've also got the, the chiller down here. So in a minute, we'll have a look at the uh, temperature control of the system and how the chiller is exhausting. But first of all, let's just have a look at the dosing pumps and where the tubings, which are color coded, from these vessels go to. That's in the next cabinet. So this is one of my favorite things about this tank. We have a separate section that's been specifically made to house a lot of the components of the tank. So have a look in here. So this tank is running with an apex system. We've got our control system up here and each of our modules. We've also got our wave makers, which we'll have a look at in the tank in a sec, but our wave maker controllers are here. Again, everything is so beautifully hidden. The cables are hidden with the ducted, uh, the slotted ducting. And so this is where we're dosing. So this is the apex DOS system. So we've got four twin units and as you can see, each are color coded, beautifully labeled, which makes it so easy to dose and control your dosing um, and know exactly what's dosing when. So the cabinetry on this system is absolutely beautiful. Everything is so well hidden. Uh, the cabinetry is all beautifully white two packed. Uh, but one of the complications that you have with a system which is so enclosed is the fact that you have to control the heat so the lighting, uh, a lot of the pumps, everything is creating heat which needs to be extracted. Now the biggest heat producing componentry on a system like this is the chiller. So the way that the chiller is exhausting is quite interesting. So we'll go back into the cabinet. So it's a Tico 2000. One of the things that's uh, unique with the Ticos is that you're able to uh, direct the exhaust out of the top of the hood here and it's actually directing into ducting that feeds up between the tank. The tank and the cupboard to the left and it feeds up out into the top. So we'll open up the hood again. And so we've also got an exhaust here which draws air up, hot air from the lights and such, up through uh, the ducting to a whirly bird to exhaust the heat. So even though this system is uh, well and truly enclosed in this beautiful cabinetry, the temperature control is actually very efficient. So we've had a look at the equipment which is outside of the tank, in the cupboards and um, above the tank. But let's have a look at the componentry which is within the tank because it's also very well hidden. So the wave makers, we've got, and you can just see the wet side here, it's an MP40 quiet drive and we've got the Apex WAVs or WAV as I call them. Now with the, uh, the MP40s, they're absolutely perfect for a tank like this because whilst the wet side is in the tank, the dry side is in the section external from the tank. And so it means that the cable to the wave maker is hidden in the cabinet. Now on the other side, we've taken it one step further. You can see we have another wet side for the MP40, which is actually hidden within this uh, ceramic frag rack. So you can hardly even see the wave maker. And again, it's dry side, fits beautifully in this section, hiding the cables to the wave maker. It's a really smart design. Possibly my favorite thing about this tank, apart from the equipment, is the scape. 
it perfectly complements the size and dimensions of the tank. Now we've used a combination of the Real Reef Rock base as well as the Real Reef Rock shelf. And so we have a number of these shelves that are giving us really nice positions to uh, gluing corals, to have overhangs. And as I said, this tank is still quite young. So there's still a few pieces of acro that need to be glued in position. Uh, quite a few of these are just sitting in place, but the structure is nice and open. It fills the dimensions of the tank but it also allows for excellent water flow around the structure. It's a really good scape. So we don't typically look at tanks in this series of Epic Tanks and Why They Work, which are so young. So this tank, it's not much more than 12 months old. And so it's certainly a beautiful tank with its equipment and such, but there's a lot of growth uh, that we're going to see in the next couple of years in this tank. And so we'll bring you updates to show you how the tank's going and how everything's tracking. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Epic Tanks and Why They Work. And stay tuned to Gallery Aquatica TV for more episodes in the future. And don't forget to, to like the video uh, and to share it. So thanks for watching guys and happy reefing. So that's our video for today. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, hit the subscribe as well. We'll be putting out videos every week showing a, a new tank with new products. There's gonna be lots in all the videos. I'm Cam the Fish Guy, and keep on reefing.